Now, if you're in the market for an Android phone that's just a little different than all the rest out there, and you're especially against notches, you absolutely hate having a notch, but you want to have the latest hardware on your phone, then this one is worth a look. It's the Nubia Z20 with a dual screen setup. So for your selfie shots and your always on or ambient display, there's a screen on the rear. Now it's hidden away, we're not on. You don't even see it because of the mirror glass finish. And when it is on, you'll use it for your selfies, of course. So you get the main cameras and most importantly, you can take selfies with an ultra wide camera. We still don't have a lot of phones out there with ultra wide selfie cameras. It's mostly just LG with the only ones really pushing ahead with that. So in the box, you will find a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 charger. Even though the phone supports the 27 watts, it doesn't come included in the box, which is a real shame. So the charge time with this one at 18 watts is one hour and 55 minutes approximately. So just under two hours. If it was QC4 spec, then it would be one hour. We get a 3.5 to Type-C adapter, a Type-C cable, of course, and a TPU case. So this TPU case you can use or the supplied screen protector for the rear screen. With the screen protector, you don't get as much protection, of course, but you can use the touch. With the other one, you can't use touch. You can still see the screen for selfies, so that's at least one positive there. And we've got a quick start guide as well for the phone. So the Z20's weight is 190 grams. That's about 10 grams less than some of the other flagships I've reviewed. And the thickness is 9.6 millimeters. So it's not the thinnest phone out there. That's probably because of the two screens. So right now, this is the main screen you're looking at with the always on display. That's just a video that's being looped. You can customize that in the settings. And if I flip it around now, you'll see the rear screen is also on. You can also choose to disable the rear screen if you wanted to. This will save on your battery life. Of course, having both of them on at the same time really does take an impact on battery life as I will show you later on as expected. So the rear camera module, you can see sticks out a little bit by approximately one millimeter there. We've got the 16 megapixel ultra wide, 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 is the main sensor. And then we have a three times optical camera, which is eight megapixels. Now you've got dual tone LED flash here and it looks like dual LED flash modules by the looks of it when I look closely at it. But I've noticed that this one never actually turns on when I take photos with flash. So yes, you can take selfies with flash, which is great. And of course, that's the main camera there. Airpiece at the top. Now the airpiece is on both sides. So you can make calls from both sides. There is also a status LED right here. And both left and right, we have the side fingerprint reader here, as you can see. Now I've found that these fingerprint readers are a little bit hit and miss. They're only working about 90% of the time for me. So here we have a SIM tray slot, two nano SIMs, and just demonstrate. So whatever screen is facing you is the one that's gonna turn on. So you can choose between having the secondary display with its 720p resolution. And you can see then to unlock is a little bit slower here it's not actually doing too bad than it was, just a little bit slower than, than most of your always on capacitive rear fingerprint scanners or even the new in screen ones now. So I'll show you the main screen and you see that unlocks pretty quick there. On the bottom of the phone you can see our loudspeaker type C port and microphone. So the frame all around the outside is made out of this metal that does have like a chrome look to it and overall feels good. It feels a bit like say a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. You can just see the antenna lines right there. And then along the top here, another two antenna lines, secondary mic, no IR transmitter with this phone. So the bezels aren't too bad. And we do have the status LEDs up here in the main display. And that is why the top bezel is not the slimmest you will see. The screen has a curvature to it a little bit here. Maximum brightness is 550 nits, and this is a full HD plus screen here. Now the operating system is Android 9 that it's running and it's pretty much stock really. They've got a few little tweaks in here, but not really a lot of customization in settings, which is unfortunate, but always on display options. I'll quick, quickly show you those. So you can choose between these different animations. Uh, you can set it on a schedule as well if you wanted to. You can adjust the brightness. So lower brightness, of course, will save on your battery. And you're able to, as mentioned, disable them if you wanted to. Now, the screen itself doesn't have a lot of options here. So when you go under display, you normally get settings for white balance. But they've just got the standard Android settings here for your font size, your scaling, DPI, adaptive brightness, of course. And that is, is really it. There is no... Uh, dark mode either with this display which 
isn't really great. I would like to have that on there and no full screen gestures either. But other than that, the ROM performance itself is good. I haven't had any noticeable lags and stutters and issues. But let's take a look again at these uh, displays here, both of them. So you see here that overall it's in here. I don't really have any issues with it at all. I love the fact that the curvature isn't that bad, but in hand just makes it feel a little bit better. If I swap over now, we'll take a look at the rear screen. So if I lock it now, flip and unlock. Okay, that app should have been there, but we'll launch it again. Okay, tests, and you'll see now. Okay, this screen has a bit of a mirror finish to it, okay? So that makes it a little bit more difficult. On camera, it looks all right, but when you look at it at certain angles, and especially in daylight, it's gonna reflect a little bit. And this one has only 330 nits, 720p max here. So I don't see a lot of people using the rear screen just really for your selfie shots. Now onto audio, so voice calls. I've placed a few of this, about 13 minutes of voice calls from my last battery cycle, and no problems. Okay, the quality is good like any other flagship. TWS audio, your Bluetooth 5 audio sounds good. Using the Type-C adapter to 3.5 millimeter, again, no problems. They do allow us to push out a decent amount of volume. Now the loudspeaker, single one right down the bottom here, there is no secondary loudspeaker in the earpiece at all, which is unfortunate. Now we do have a tiny hint of bass with the loudspeaker and the overall volume is good, but here's a sample. Back on the topic of ROM performance, because I wanted to point out that the task manager does keep your apps in memory because of the eight gigabytes, probably why they've done this, longer than other brands like Xiaomi or for example, Realme tend to kill things off quite quickly. So let's have a look at Twitter. That's been in there for at least 15 minutes. Okay, didn't have to reload. Uh, Display Tester was one that I showed you just recently. That was about 10 minutes ago now. Also don't have to reload that one again. So overall I've noticed that it is, it is smooth, it is good, and I haven't seen any noticeable lag or stutters, although that came in just then a little bit slower than expected. So battery life, onto that now first, because this is very important. So with the always on display and my typical test that I do with 200 nits of brightness, which is not of course the brightest setting, it's well below 50%, I managed to get seven hours of on-screen time over seven hours and 36 minutes. This is a good result. And this is Antutu, okay? So it's the new version. That's what's on Google Play Store now is version eight. And the score is a lot higher than you'd expect. So this would translate, I believe, into about 380,000 points with the old Antutu last version. Now this is battery life with the always on displays off. The same test that I did, I got nine hours. So that is really good. Now the first time, my first day's battery use was actually very poor. I got about five and a half hours of on-screen time. It wasn't what I expected. So really it just shows you need to cycle the battery at least two or three times before you get the proper full battery life. Now the speeds here, this is uh, 4G, good. No complaints with the reception as well. Uh, Core quality is good. Ah, oh, look, I do actually have, there you go, the old N22 version on here. I did install that, I forgot, because that was actually taken uh, quite a few days ago. So there we go, 362,000 for those interested. GPS is working like any other Snapdragon 855 mobile, accuracy of four meters, which is more or less like all the other flagships. Does it support dual frequency? So yes, it does. You can see carrier frequency right here. And we've got a level five in there. That uh, tells us that yes, it does. So wireless, okay, wireless performance isn't the fastest I have seen out of a Snapdragon 855 plus mobile a little bit slower. So max speeds will top out about 260 megabits per second. And over the other side of the studio here, uh, I did end up getting uh, reasonable kind of speeds. If it gets over 100, I'm happy. So there's no complaint really about it. It's just, it's not going to be the fastest, that's all. Uh, internal storage is UFS 2.1 spec. So we're not seeing those crazy uh, sequential read speeds of UFS 3, but overall this is very good. The main thing here, of course, random reads and writes they are really good, high numbers. So that's not gonna bottleneck the system. Okay, so like most Chinese phones, we've got a security level here in Widevine of level three cert. 
Okay, so for you non-techies out there that don't know what this means, this means if you're into your Netflix or Amazon Prime Video, you're stuck in standard definition until that changes, until a level one cert. So this is the only tweak we have with the display, is you can change it onto the natural mode, which I prefer and currently running, or colorful mode. But no tweaking of the white balance, unfortunately. So hopefully they can add that in the ROM. Now you've got this pressure ball to switch as well. So if you give this a big squeeze, it'll take a screenshot. I'll demonstrate it now. That's the long squeeze. And it is handy. Now you can adjust it and configure this to launch, for example, a custom app. If you wanted to, you could have it launch camera, for example. That would be handy, right? And yes, I am on the latest version of the software at the time of this review. I just wanted to point out too, you get about 117 gigabytes free on the 128 gigabyte version. So plenty of space. Remember, no micro SD card support. Bloatware, you don't get any bloatware from them apart from Facebook but you do get quite a few Google apps that are already pre-installed system apps, so you cannot just go and un uninstall them. Okay, what about gaming performance? So Snapdragon 855 with eight gigabytes of RAM, it is as expected, so all the titles out there are gonna be super playable, good frame rate. So this is Call of Duty on the maximum settings. We'll see how it runs, but before we do that, I wanted to show you that I'm in the game space mode, which is their dedicated gaming mode where you can add games to. So you get this readout here of our thermals, temperatures, and the clock rate right there for the GPU and the CPU. We've got the touch handle mode. Okay, well I don't actually have that. Auto mode, you can set it then to, you can change this to a performance mode, which is supposed to hold and maintain higher frames per second. So I'm gonna set it to that, which is the super mode, which will increase the temperatures, and they do warn you about that. You've got other things there, like for example, blocking messages and even calls, so you're not disturbed when you're gaming there. So it is handy, and you can also control the screen brightness. So let's get and jump into some gameplay here, Battle Royale, maximum settings, and Call of Duty. So the performance is as expected, very good frame rate. I just got lucky there with a the kill, but super, super smooth here. Now I'm feeling a little bit of heat coming through on the rear of the phone in the highest performance mode here. So I'll game a little bit more, see if I can win this round, and we'll check on the thermals. So the game is still running, and we're seeing maximum temperatures here on the back that are looking very, very good. So let's just flip it over. Oh, my screen's gone black for some reason. I don't think the game liked me doing that. And really not that warm after 30 minutes of gaming. Onto the cameras now. So the same camera module here is the rear camera module. So of course you just flip it around, you use the secondary screen here now for selfie mode. So what I like about this is we've got access to the ultra wide camera, which is really good having ultra wide selfies just to fit so much more in. Now when you go into the video mode, unfortunately there seems to be a limitation here that I don't know whether it is intentional or not, but only 1080p video. So we have no access to 4K 30 or 4K 60 when in the front facing orientation with the camera here, which is, is quite odd. Now in pro mode, you get all the same settings as you would with the rear, but no access to the three times optical camera. So I'll swap around now, simply tap this, it tells you to swap, and we are back now in the rear camera mode. And you'll see here that when you go to pro mode, you've got access now to three times, and the video quality right up to 4K, 60 frames per second. Now here with the front camera, there's a few things I don't understand because it's using the same camera. So the front and rear camera is of course the same because it's got the dual screen. So you just flip the phone around and it will not shoot in 4K. So we've got 4K when you use the main screen, but when you use the screen on the rear, we've only got 1080p maximum here. Now you can see that it doesn't seem to have any electronic image stabilization either. And this is unfortunate, but at least we do have autofocus with this camera and we can't seem to use the ultra wide either which is another setback that hopefully they can correct with software updates so this is 4k 30 frames per second we cannot swap over to the ultra wide camera it just will not let us so we've got electronic image stabilization combined with optical image stabilization with this sony imax 586 sensor and you can see when i walk along but it's not the actual smoothest footage i have seen now the bit rate for video is good for the 4k but the audio bitrate I find to be a little bit low and it could be improved upon. So we can't zoom or do anything here, which is a shame. I would love to be able to now swap over to the ultra wide camera. It's just not possible. You can't shoot video 
on that ultra wide camera. So there we go guys, it can take a really good photo and that problem with the video is just software only. The fact that we can only record when you're in the selfie mode using the secondary screen just up to 1080p maximum. To me that's kind of silly, it defeats the purpose of having that secondary screen and the setup they've got that why can't we get the same options, why can't we shoot with the ultra wide video in selfie mode as well would also be good and 4k. So hopefully Nubia can address that, they can add that. The other things that uh, are well good about this phone is the screen, the front screen is very good. The rear one's not so amazing, but it's just meant for a secondary screen really for ambient on display as well. So it's not as bright and it does have the mirror finish to it, making it a little bit difficult to see, especially in bright light. Now when you're doing your selfies, it's bright enough to get yourself in the frame and the viewfinder there, that's okay. But if you're using it for your main screen and typing text messages or WhatsApp messages or something like that, that's when it'll be a little bit difficult there. So battery life, my first charge with battery life and my normal kind of use was quite disappointing. I got about five, I think it was almost six hours of on-screen time for a 4,000 milliamp hour battery with the quite efficient Snapdragon 855 Plus. It didn't seem quite spot on to me, but the third battery cycle there, or the fourth I think it was, it then redeemed itself. And once you disable as well the ambient displays, you turn them off, uh, it will definitely increase your battery life. So for most people it's going to be about one day, uh, definitely one day, okay? Unless you're a really, really heavy user gaming, then you're looking at only about just five hours of continual gaming on this. But that's, that's normal for a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. But for most people, light, medium use, a day, day and a half or so is what you're going to get out of this. Now the other things with the software, we cannot tweak the white balance with the screen. You cannot adjust the navigation keys if you want them around the other way. And there's no full screen gestures. It really should be there. So there's a lot of things they can add to fix Nubia in this phone with the software and if they do do that then it, this will turn the Nubia Z20 for me from a good phone into then a great phone once they can address that because I do love the fact that we've got no notch on this phone I'm really not into notches if you follow me on the channel you you know that I run on about it quite a bit and the fact that we can take ultra wide selfies I really do like having that option especially if you're out with a group then you can take a few snaps there. Now the low light performance too with the camera is uh, not wonderful. You can see it makes a bit of a difference, but it's definitely not going to be the best out there. Uh, that would be really Google's Pixel, uh, iPhone 11, Huawei, P30 Pro, Mate 30. You get the idea, so there's other models there. But for the price it's selling for, good hardware, great hardware, just fix the software. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new around here, please do uh, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications and I'll see you back in the next one.